Why Porsche is so special for me? That's a very difficult one, because I'm a car guy. I like all type of cars. But at a certain moment, you have to, to make a choice in life. And I think I made a very good choice. My name is Johan Eriks. I live in Belgium, in Antwerp, and I would like to thank you for the opportunity to come and visit us. My Porsche collection started when I was pretty young. A Porsche is great history great tradition. The Porsches were pretty popular for rallying in Europe. And in Belgium, you have to know the Belga and Mestos are two tobacco companies. And there was a fierce war in between them. And you were either a fan of Belga or a fan of Mestos. I remember in that period, you were on the side of the rallies and you had banners all over with Belga, Mestos, and then you had the people, the Mestos people together and the Belga people together. And whenever the cars came by, they were cheering their icons of the Belgian rally history. And then 9-11, there is no other car in the world that you can think of. And after so many years and after so many iterations, it's still a 9-11. Tremendous, to, when you come to think of it, that it was developed in the 60s. Uh, infrastructure of the car, the style of the car, evolution, but the basics are still there. When I turned 18, I bought my very first one, which was a 2.2 from 1970, but that was a restoration project. I didn't have the money to uh, restore the car, so basically the project stayed there and remained at the house until the moment I sold it to a friend of mine who gave it to his son and the car is still in the Antwerp region. And then fast forward till 1991, at the dealership I ordered a 964 RS. I was absolutely madly in love with the RSs. I still have the car today, we did some track days. You don't buy an RS to buy groceries, you buy an RS to go on the track. I remember that at the time when it was new and when you were driving on a daily basis, people declared you a loony because you were driving a race car on the road. Yes, it was hard, but it was still comfortable to drive on the road. But then again, taking it down on the track, go to, to Zolder, Francochon, the Nürburgring, that was amazing. In 1984, Prescott Kelly wrote an article when the SCRS was new and was presented to the press. Prescott referred to the fact that the ultimate collection would be the 1967 R, a 1973 RS, and a 1984 SCRS. So I think subconsciously, it always worked my mind. And I'm very happy to say that today, I have those three cars in my collection. The 911 R is the most unknown, iconic, holy grail car of the 911 series. The 911 R has all the DNA that is used in every racing 911 until today. The project started in 66 and it was the very first project led by Ferdinand Pich and his job was to make a race car out of the 911. And what he had, he had two um, balances on his, on his desk and on one balance was the original part of a 911 and the second balance was the part that was gonna be put on the car and it had to be lighter than the first one. So every component of the car was weighted in order to make it a light car. Everything that is not necessary to drive the car is being thrown out. So if you put the weight compared to the, uh, to the horsepower of the engine, you have a tremendously fast engine. I did so many things with the car. Uh, I drove it on a track, I drove it sideways, I drove it fast, I drove it slower. We did so many things with the car, so it's, 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 it became a part of me. And I'm very, very, very happy and uh, very fortunate to be able to talk about it. And if you would have said to me when I was 18, you're gonna have an R in your collection, I probably would have said, no, no way, impossible. If you look at the car scene in the 70s, you look at just normal cars, very slow cars, family cars, sedans. And then you have the RS, which went from zero to 60 in a little over five seconds, which was tremendously fast. And remember that at that period of time, all the cars, the normal cars, looked almost the same. And then Porsche came with a car where the back was wider than the front. First time that the back wheels were wider than the front wheels. You had the front spoiler, you had the back spoiler. And then something that Porsche did on the side, you had the Carrera banner. And so you have to imagine, it was the first time that a constructor told everybody on the roads, hey, you're driving a Carrera. 
you have to remember that the SCRS was a car that was never meant to be. And there was a loophole in the FIA regulation where you were able to have a car homologated for racing if it was an evolution model on a basis that didn't exist anymore. So remember we're in 1984, so Porsche introduced the Carrera, so the SCs were out of production. So Porsche used the loophole and they took SC bodies, they made them into turbo loops, and that became the SCRS, so eventually they made 21 cars, 20 cars and then one afterwards with the parts they still had available. And then you have to remember in 84, the SCRS with a non-turbo engine, with an atmospheric engine, was faster than a turbo. So it was the fastest 911 that you could buy at the time. It's nice to have all those cars standing in your collection, but it's so much nicer to drive them to take them out, good weather, bad weather, whatever, drive them.